So apparently, uh, this is the extent of the property that I'm on. That's obviously what the fence signifies. I guess even here in Russia, um, fences are kind of an international communication standard. Sorry if I'm jerking around a little bit. I'm being assaulted by mosquitoes and other insects here. But uh, apparently there used to be a lake here, like a naturally formed lake about a thousand years ago that dried up. And um, there have been efforts to basically revive that lake. That's what this uh, backhoe and the piles of dirt there are about. Those buildings that you see there in the background, as you can probably gather by the cross, the uh, there's a church there or chapel or whatever. Uh, apparently this building on the right side there is a retirement home for, I guess, for the elderly. There's also apparently a school operating somewhere there and um, and we're told that the church is multi-denominational. Here in Russia, the uh, the Russian Orthodox Church is definitely um, the prevailing faith. You don't get a lot of uh, Catholic or Protestant or any other branches of Christianity. It's very predominantly uh, Russian Orthodox. But we're told that uh, that church is multi-denominational. You have Catholics and Protestants worshipping there along with the uh, Russian Orthodox believers. So, very nice. I guess that makes this place uh, uncommonly open-minded for uh, for a rural place. It's actually very nice here. I have to say, I really, I really like the vibe here. The people here have been very nice. You know, if you come to a place like this, I mean, if you come to a farm in the United States, there's, um, I mean, it's pri it's private property. People won't welcome you. They'll they'll be, what what are you doing here? Get off of my land. But uh, you know, this is a not-for-profit operation. For the most part, they don't really make any money off what they're doing here. They're just uh, a settlement of people who came here to live the country life, live the good life away from the city. It's kind of nice. I don't think you find this very much. I'm sure there are communes like this in the United States. They're just not as common as here in Russia. Apparently here in Russia, they're fairly, uh, fairly common and they sort of fit in well with the, the Russian uh, ex-communist mentality. So very interesting. Uh, we were just advised that um, there are basically three different types of, uh, three different categories that you can fall into if, when you come here, uh, when you're here. Uh, one is, of course, a guest. I mean, we're guests, which means you can, you know, you're welcome to walk around and take a look. It's basically it's kind of public property in the sense that, you know, you're not, I don't think you're restricted in where you can go or what you can do. It's not like, I mean, people don't jealously guard their land. Um, but you cannot take part in their, um, in their harvest, when they're harvesting food. Um, the second category is um, you, can, uh, you can actually get a little bit of, uh, I guess, get a little plot of land w which you can till if you like and become part of the community. And you can also take part in the communal harvest when they harvest food late in the, you know, in late summer or autumn or whatever. Um, to enter that category costs 60,000 rubles, which is, uh, what is that? That's about 2,000 US dollars. Is that right? I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. 2,000 US dollars. Um, and then if you want to stay here, you can get... Uh, you can actually have your own little, I guess, essentially permanent plot of land and uh, build on it, build your own little house, however you want, and basically just stay here and be a farmer living in this little commune. Uh, that costs 20,000 US dollars. So they do use money. I mean, this is not a moneyless society. They are, um, I keep thinking of monks. You know, if you study how monks live, in theory, they're supposed to live without money, but in practice, you know, they do things, they make little trinkets, they, you know, uh, sell vegetables and, I guess, sometimes meat and things like that to the public for money so they can buy essential things. Uh, so I guess it's kind of similar here. I mean, this isn't a completely uh, separate kind of society. They're not completely removed from urbanization, they'll still, you know, they obviously they use money here, they take money here, and you can, uh, they will use that money to buy things, like I guess tractors and agricultural equipment, and probably building materials, things like that. 
Um, apparently, this operation has the full approval of the Russian government. Um, little communes like this sometimes have a problem because I guess sometimes they just plop down anywhere they feel like it in the countryside and then the Russian government says, no, you don't have permission to just set up a, an establishment there. But uh, apparently the Russian government not only approves of this place, but actually suggested that they operate a, a tourist kind of facility here, like actually get, you know, get some tourism going here, have people pay for like guided tours of uh, this commune. So if that happens, I guess we would have, it, when that happens, we'll have to pay for the treatment that we're getting now. So in, in essence, we're sort of getting a, a sneak peek. We're kind of getting now for free what ultimately you might have to pay for. Вот это, то есть получается, вот отсюда роднички текут с наших земель. Вот и они вот эти пруды, потом часть воды возвращается сюда. Это вот вот этот ручей сейчас. А мой дом вот он здесь. Это вот земли собственности. Так вот мы хотим как сделать? У нас видите вот так ручейки будут. На каждый участок будет затекающий холодный ручей, чтобы можно было лососевые породы. И будет теплый вытекать карповые породы. Сазан, карп. Прудов будет очень много и пруды большие, не две три сотки. Мы планируем по 10 соток, по 12 пруды. Нет, это же только план. Вот, да, я понимаю, да, на плане. Да, на плане. Ну вот Лешкин водоем, вот он, видите, маленький еще. Вот. А водоемы будут совсем большие. Вот Паша начнет копать через неделю две. А это тоже по собственному, да, потом планированию? Да, 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 да. То есть вот, вот это мы планируем так расширить территорию. Вот нам, чиновники, в принципе. И вот здесь еще 48 гектар есть. То есть центр поселения вот здесь теперь окажется. И школа вот здесь будет у нас построена. Вот сейчас вот эти участки так же мы распределили. Вот здесь вот красивые эти бары. Вот вы сейчас сюда пойдете. Это все поля, видите, были финские. Они заросли. Были. Они просто выросли уже, да, фермерские. Сейчас там уже морожка растет. Вот. То есть вот это, это старт. То есть это вот два с половиной года назад, как мы начали uh -huh. все это делать. А так, когда были фермерские земли, я тут картошку сажал, там все, что комиссия приехала. Теплицы у меня стояли 50-метровой длины. Там росли гладиолусы, которых в мире не было. Да, такие чайшие сорта. Да. So allegedly there are actually plans to build a cafe here. This, this is where you come in. This is where we... Uh... We parked right after we came in. This is the rusty trailer and barrel that I pointed out. There's the car we came in. And um, yeah, they I guess they're quite serious actually about making a, a little mini tourist operation out of this place and kind of encouraging more people to come here. Apparently, um, it's fairly unusual for men to come out here. I mean, you can, you've probably noticed I'm here with three of my female Russian co-workers. And I was advised that um, not a lot of men come out here because uh, this lifestyle doesn't appeal to them. They don't want to be, you know, living off the wild. So the allegedly the women who come here and stay here significantly outnumber the men. That may, if that knowledge becomes well known, that may inspire more men to come out here. Who knows? I didn't come here for that reason. Honest, I didn't even know. И вот по основной дороге пойдете. И вот это все, ну это минут 10 идти. Вот здесь все вот такие чудесные бары красивые начинаются. Особенно вот сюда, вот сюда, прям как парк. Они только сейчас елочка. Это все лес. А мы пойдемте я думаю. Не, 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 это метров ну сто. Угу. Вот вдоль лет прямо идите. Вот, вдоль этого. Угу. И первая левая дорога ваша. И вот вы по ней пойдете, только на эту не сворачивайте, mm -hmm. а вот по основной идите, потому что это кончается там, Юша. Там yeah, один отшельник живет у нас. Ага. Uh -huh. Это комнатная церковь. Mm -hmm. вот. Нет, он нормальный, mm -hmm. дядька, чудесный, добрый очень. Mm -hmm. Спасибо, Спасибо большое. Спасибо большое. Да, а на залив выйдите на залив. Allegedly, somebody just saw a wild rabbit here in this uh, little ravine here. I didn't see it, but uh, somebody else insists that they saw one. So. I don't really mind wild rabbits. I just hope we don't run into any wild bears here. That would be uh, that would be an adventure. That'd be a little bit too much adventure for one day. 
Okay, so we have uh, separated from our tour guide. He has gone back into his village to uh, milk his cows or do whatever they do with their day. And we've uh, gone for a little stroll in the forest. And my uh, colleagues over there are, uh, well, currently that one appears to be doing jumping jacks, but a moment ago they were picking blueberries because there are wild blue, blue, blueberries and wild raspberries to be had here. And apparently they're quite fresh. Uh, apparently, if you take something Adam. while it's still... Here's some blueberries. Oh, yes. Just Adam is not going to eat them. <laughs> no, I, I will not eat uh, eat them because they they probably have some kind of... Uh, hmm? some kind of weed killer or something like that on them. Uh, you know, natural weed killer that the, the pine trees spray on them from their plastic bottles that all pine trees have. But, um, yeah. Hey, what, what happens if we see a bear? Do we just stand still? You won't see bear here. Wh why not? It's too... No, you won't see people out here. It's not so dark. There's not so many... Um, it's oh, too many people, I think, this way. Well, we're four people. That's not too many people for a bear. Okay, I, I am assured that we will not see bears here. The mosquitoes here are pretty vicious though. So I didn't realize it until I started walking on it, but the, um, the soil here is actually very soft. It's like very, uh, I don't know if this is kind of like a, a bog or a marsh or used to be, but the ground here is like very, um, not really, I mean, it's, it's not a swamp, but it's kind of boggy. It's, it's like like you're walking on on a giant shag carpet or something like that. Which is not to suggest that this is a good surface for shagging on. It's not that kind of shag carpet, but you know, it's very soft. It's like you're walking on uh, on baby's behinds or something like that. Not that I would know what that feels like. I haven't actually tried this, so this is not a conclusion based on any empirical experience that I have. What was that? Something just... Some small creature just darted through that segment of the... I don't know. Maybe it was just a lizard or something. It's definitely a little too big to be an insect. But I'm not sure what it might have been. Oh well. Hey, what happens if we get lost? We won't. Uh, we'll we're, call somebody. we're already lost. I don't know where we are. <laughs> Relaxed. One other thing I should mention as a uh, precaution to anyone watching who might be tempted to replicate our behavior here. Um, ticks are very much a concern in Russia. Uh, I actually know of, uh, I personally know a couple of people who recently have been uh, subject to tick bites. And as you may know, ticks carry Lyme disease and other nasty things like that, which tend to be somewhat terminal. Um, I'm assured that um, the season for ticks is over, that it's really more like late spring, early summer. Now it's, uh, actually today's the last day of July, right? Today is July 31st, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, today's July 31st, so the season for ticks is already over. But if you're ever in a place like this during tick season, do be aware, do wear long pants. Uh, I'm wearing long pants, so is she. She, as you can see, is not, so she would be um, unwise to do this during tick season, but I'm sure that now ticks around here are, are already all dead or or hibernating or whatever ticks do when they're out of season.